Okay, everyone, welcome back. Let's go ahead and have a lot of fun creating some spring and Easter crafts, either or really. You could really run any of these in any direction based on the designs that you choose. But I'm gonna show you a variety of really great supplies that I found at Dollar Tree recently during this spring season. And we're going to just go ahead and get our craft on and we have a lot to cover today. So if you're a Beth the Dilly Bestie, you know that sometimes we have a really nice long video of crafting and that's what we are in tune for today. So first things first, I found this nice little wood block. It is five and a half inches by seven and a half inches and it comes in this bare wood, but I did decide to add just a single layer of chalk paint to the top. And then I also found these really nice little wood beads. You can find these at any craft store as well, but again, these are from Dollar Tree. And Dollar Tree also has these nice wall decals as well. And I think they, yes, they are removable. At least this one says removable, this one does as well. We aren't going to use this one today, but I did wanna point it out because I do feel like it has a very beautiful spring vibe to it. Plus it has a foil look, which is just gorgeous but I am inspired with this set here. So we're gonna use this set with a little addition of some pattern, oh no, not pattern vinyl, just some regular vinyl. We'll bring in this in just a little bit. But the first thing that I'm going to do, let me move that because it's a little bit bright, but I'm going to bring in a little vinyl and I will link everything that I'm using down below including the font choices that I used. But let me weed out my little, he is alive. Ooh, we gotta get the dot to the eye. Okay, there we go. He is alive. Again, the font that I'm using, or if I am using a design, everything will be listed below for you in case you want to recreate any of these crafts. Okay, so here is where we're going with this. So again, from the Dollar Tree, from the Dollar Tree, I have some vinyl. I'm going to first and foremost put the vinyl onto my little block here. And I wanna decide what I want to do. I'm thinking I will off-center it. Yes, I think that will be really neat. Okay, my favorite transfer tape is back in the craft room after I kind of went on a trial run with a new transfer tape just to see. Every once in a while I like to see if I can find something that I like more. Well, I failed miserably with the last one. <laughs> so I'm back to my favorite, favorite tape. So let me cut off just enough. And I'm gonna be using those new scissors that I found. If you missed the last video I did, I shared a haul of wonderful items that I found on Amazon for my craft room. Those scissors are amazing. They cut beautifully. Okay, let me put that right down. Also going to grab my scraper tool, really burnish. Okay, then I'll do this side as well. Okay, with it face down, I'll just remove that backer. You can see why this transfer tape is just amazing. And again, I think what I'll do is maybe put it a little bit high. Okay, you can do whatever you'd like, but I think this is going to be a really cool vision. Okay, so I like that. Okay, burnish. And then, being careful not to scratch my paint, I'm just gonna use my weeding tool to lift up a corner of that vinyl. I'll save this transfer tape for later. That way I can reuse it. Okay, so the first part of my little project is done here. And now I'm going to bring in those decals. And I'm really intrigued with this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some right on my project. So I'm gonna do one here, allowing it to fall off the side. That is okay for now. And then I feel like there was, yes, there was more of a kind of long stemmed leaf. So we're gonna put that there. Trust the process. I think it's gonna look really cute. And then we're going to bring this one in and do something like this. And then we're going to pause for a second, okay? So 
I'm going to bring in, this is one of my most favorite crafting items, but I have this little rotating board here that you can use to cut on. I, it's very good for doing fabric cutting, but let me grab a little X-Acto knife. This was also from my Amazon haul. So if you haven't felt the nudge yet, go look at that video, but I'm simply going to trim off, oops, I went into the wood instead of my decal there. I'm gonna trim off these little decals and I'm going to save them to the side, okay? Because I'm gonna use them in just a moment to add to the rest of my project, okay? Being careful not to trim into my wood. Be a little difficult. Okay, and then I can just rotate and cut. Okay, so those should be off. Okay, and oops, I think I need to fix that a little bit. But here's all my pieces. Now, let's turn this around. And that's what it looks like so far. Isn't that pretty? Okay, now what I want to do is let's take some of these pieces, especially this piece, because now we just have some small areas up here. And we'll just line that up just so. Okay, I'm gonna line that up right with the edge. Press that down. And we're just gonna have a nice little floral piece of decor for do something like this for Easter, okay? And then this nice big piece, we can do something like that. Okay, pretty, I like that. And then once more, we just turn it around, trim off the excess. Okay, turn and trim the rest. There's that, and there's that, and look at that. Isn't that neat? Okay, so these, again, are just, oops, I have to, let me mend this one, this down here. Got a little bit uneven where I got into the wood, but it's easy peasy to remedy. Okay, there we go. Oh, isn't that sweet? I really think that is a really nice and soft. You could either um, do anything you'd like and make this more spring, but I wanted to run in the more of the Easter direction. I love how that looks, and I really like how the font, or I'm sorry, the words, I like how that's off-center and you know nudged up a little bit. I think that's really pretty. So again, these are from Dollar Tree. They are just nice little wall decals. There's a variety of things on this actual sheet, but again, I focused on that lighter pink and the lighter stem. So I thought those were really cute, really fun, and another way that you can use some of the little products there to do some arts and crafts. So I hope you enjoyed this first one. I think that's really sweet, and I hope you're inspired to give this a try yourself. Oh my goodness, totally not done here. If you're wondering why I even mentioned the beads, it's because I wanted to do a little bead work and create a little hanger. So I was at Hobby Lobby recently and picked up some jute, okay? And you probably can find this at um, Dollar Tree as well, but I accidentally left Dollar Tree without looking for some and Hobby Lobby was my next stop, so I just picked up some there, but just know that you absolutely will have some options at the Dollar Tree for this next part. So again, Dollar Tree, but this is from Hobby Lobby. Now what I want to do is I'm gonna grab my staple tool and I'm going to place this right here, first and foremost. Okay, so I want to do something like this. Bring in my staple tool and, okay, there we go, that should be just fine. Now, let's move that to the side a little bit turn this around and I'm going to start threading these beads and goodness it's probably going to take every single one of these I probably should have been mindful of how many I got but let's see what we can do here okay so from one pack hopefully we can do quite a bit and if not we'll just shorten the little hanger because it doesn't need to be too awfully long and if you are not hanging this, I like even having something like this, even if I decide just to 
have it sitting on the counter or something because it just adds just some more texture and visual interest. Oh yeah, we're gonna have plenty. Okay, so I'm going to just place all of these. Oh my goodness, absolutely plenty. In fact, I'm wondering if I should stop there because I think that is just about the look that I'm going for. I think that that's really sweet. Okay, so I will stop there. I'm gonna put the rest of these away before they roll all over my craft room. Okay, and then what I'll do is just turn this over, visually line that up so that it matches. Okay, I think that looks just about right, right there. Position that, move my finger and, and there we go. Oh. <laughs> Not even close. Position that, try again, and... Bethany, what in the world? Okay, here we go. 80th times the charm. Okay, there we go. Well, relatable moment, right? And if not, you can giggle behind the screen. Just be nice, just be nice to me. Okay, here we go. I think that turned out really sweet. I love that. Again, even if you decide not to hang that, it's just a nice little texture too. So there's our first craft, all inspired by items that I found at Dollar Tree for spring and Easter. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is create a little reverse canvas. So Dollar Tree has these very nice canvases. I have done this a few times from the Dollar Tree canvas and I think it works really, really well. So I highly recommend. They also come in a variety of sizes. This may be the biggest that they have. And this is an eight by 10. I know they definitely have a smaller, but this is a really nice size, especially for decor. So if you've never done a reverse canvas, then I'm gonna teach you right now how to do it. It's so easy and it creates a really fun little idea for decor and crafting in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife here and oh let me go ahead and get this a little bit um i need to make sure that that's nice and snug in there this is my first time using it so i had just gotten that all ready before and now there we go okay that should be good if not this is a review on on this on this knife okay this might be a little bit tricky okay so what you're going to do is between the staple and the outside you are going to cut and that is going to take the canvas and remove it from the frame okay so I'm just gonna go around cutting off that canvas just like so and working with canvas <laughs> really dries out your hand so if you need a little break to put some lotion on for some reason when I do this I feel like I it like dehydrates my hands really quickly for some, so there we go. Okay, I have to admit this knife is n no good. Okay, it's already, it's just not staying in, it's bending, and if you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but the tip has already been bent. Okay, so unfortunately that's gonna be a no-go. So here we are reviewing some of the things from the last video. I'm gonna go ahead and get my true control knife back out. I've never had a problem with this. And let's finish this up. Okay. So now, once you have placed a little score and cut along there, you might have to give a little extra attention to the corners because it has a little fold there. And let's see, this is, oh, it's a tad different than the frames I've worked with in the past. So let's see what this looks like under here. And of course, you do wanna be gentle because the wood isn't going to be the best, right? It's pretty soft. But let's see, okay, it definitely looks a little different than the ones I've used in the past, but I think it's still gonna be cute. Yeah, so instead of having a nice 90 degree corner, they're kind of just butted up against each other that, there, but I have to admit I'm not really mad about that because I think that that can provide a really fun look. Okay, I'll finish removing this and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so I am removing the last of this canvas here. So I have my canvas and then I have my frame here, which I actually think that's really kind of neat. And it provides a different look. I don't mind it, but if you wanted to do or have a different look, you could just go to Michael's or something like that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm not worried too much about the staples. Some may naturally come up as you're pulling off just this excess, but I do want to take off 
just any of this canvas here. So some of the staples are coming up with it, some of it are staying on. You definitely wanna keep the staples in the corner because that's physically keeping the frame put together. Okay, so that's what the back of it is going to look like. And here's our frame. So we're gonna set this to the side because we're going to bring it back in later, but now we're gonna work on the actual design. And for that, we'll need the canvas portion. I also have some iron on here. And what I want to do is let me go ahead and set this. I'm going to check and look up my heat settings for this particular project. I'm going to try, um, maybe 3.30 for 30 seconds and see how that does. Okay, let's put this little one away and grab for a new tool, which is just my weeding tool here. Okay, let's start, I can't, can't remember which way is up on this. And I will absolutely place this design link down below so you know where I got it from. That way if you want to get it yourself and recreate it, then you absolutely can do that. All right, I'm gonna start by weeding out all of the surrounding pieces. That way we can get an idea for the flow of the design and then get into the middle part and get all the middles. Okay, this is such a pretty design and I thought it would be really appropriate. I, I love looking for fun designs. I like to lay out all of my projects in front of me and then find designs that I think fit the materials that I'm working with, but so far you can kind of see, it says it's saved by his grace, isn't that beautiful? And I'm gonna go through and just get all of the little middle pieces. And remember, when you're weeding, it's really simple. All you're doing is taking away any part of the design that you don't want on your final project. So of course I don't want the middles of the letters, I'm gonna take all of those out. So just go through locate each one of those. I think I have everything, but I'm going to turn this around and let's double check. Yes, that looks great. Okay, so now comes the heating portion and we're going to heat this iron on onto our canvas. In order to do so, I'm gonna grab a heat pad. Now I made this myself. I'll place a link to that video down below. And I'm going to, before I do anything else, grab my heat press, and it's still preheating right now, but I'm going to pre-press the canvas. This is going to both straighten out the canvas, get all the wrinkles out, but also make sure there's no moisture that could interfere with the iron-on laying down. The next thing that I'm going to do is just grab a lint roller and remove anything that could be sticking to the top of my material. That little chime was just my heat press saying that it is preheated to temperature. And now I'll grab my design and just place that right on the middle. And this is where I will grab the frame and just make sure that I have plenty of room to work with around the edge, and that looks good. So it doesn't have to be perfectly in center, right? But I just wanna make sure that I have excess canvas around there and you'll see why in a little bit. So the placement is great. And now we'll bring the heat press back in. And then again, I'm gonna do 3.30 for 30 seconds. Always monitor the project in front of you. If you think it needs more, you can always add more. But if you're noticing that it's done early, then of course remove the heat. So always monitor your own project based on your materials. And I think that should be just about right. Okay, and I'm adding some medium pressure with my hands there. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to remove my project from my pad here because my pad is now nice and toasty and it's keeping a lot of that heat in. So I'm going to just place this on my really nice cold glass mat that way it instantly cools down. Let's draw that heat out. And once it's completely cool, then I can just go nice and slow so that I can make sure it laid down and it, it did perfectly. The reverse canvas is the easiest craft to do because it just works time and time again. It's so easy to iron on. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is bring the frame back in. Okay, just like so. Oh, I have a little crack here. 
but you know what? It almost just adds to the whole thing. Okay, so I bought this new heat gun. This is the first time that I'm gonna use it. I was just charging it up until this point. So it is nice and charged. Now I'm gonna keep this elsewhere because it does tell me what all of the little um, blinking lights mean, but so far it means the blinking white light means it's heating up and it will become solid when it's ready for use. So while that is heating up, oh, oh wow, it's already done, okay, so that's great. Now I'm going to grab some glue sticks and we're going to add the glue sticks to the back. Okay, so I'm using the glue sticks that came with it. Okay, and again, never used this before, but I'm going to insert it right into the back. Okay, and let me double check my directions. Okay, so I think it should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and give this a try. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to the top. Ooh. Oh, do you see how it's pulling it in? That is so cool. So I'm just pressing down and it's pulling that glue stick right on in. Okay, so there we go. I'm adding the glue. And the benefit is that it's a continuous bead. You don't have to keep pumping the handle. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Okay, so then just along that top, because I don't wanna do the whole thing because the hot glue just goes so, dries so fast, right? So I'm going to just do the top for now and get it placed. That way it's all positioned where it needs to be. There are so many ways you can do this too. You can either do, oh, you know what? I should have trimmed this first. You know what? It's gonna be fine though. Usually I trim that first, but there's again, so many ways that you can do this that um, it can be different each and every time as long as it works out, right? Okay, so usually I trim it first, but I think we're gonna be just fine. And I can just actually use my um, X-Acto knife once more to figure that out. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm gonna do the bottom. Okay. That way I'm working on an opposite edge so I can pull really, really tight. All right, now the canvas is pulled super, super tight. That way it's going to be nice and polished. Okay, let's check and see how that looks. Perfect, okay, and then I can simply go through and add glue to the sides. And I think I'm gonna need some more glue already. Okay, so the benefit of this glue gun is that it is cordless and it stays hot for a really long time. I know when I showed you guys that I got it in the last video that, um, I'm not sure if this is gonna need it yet, but I'm gonna put it right in the back that way it's ready. Um, I know a lot of you mentioned that you had been looking at it for a while. Oh, I think it needs the rest of this. Okay. There we go. Okay, that little piece down there. Um, a lot of you had mentioned that you were looking at it and really liking it. And many of you had already purchased it. So I have to admit, that this first little test run has been very successful. Okay, again, I like to work opposites of one another. That way you can just pull really, really tight with the material, okay? And now we'll just grab our little pad again and we can cut off. Actually, I don't even know that I need the pad because I think I'll just kind of cut into the wood, kind of as a nice soft wood. Okay, so. Well, let's go ahead and just trim. Okay. So there's the first side. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to not hang over the side of the frame. Okay, so there is the final little bit. Now you can go through if you have any little canvas hairs, as I call them, and just trim those off if they're gonna hang over the edge naturally. There may be some areas that you just need to focus on a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. All right, so 
You could take this a step further and before you put the frame on, you could absolutely paint the frame or stain the frame if you'd like. But how neat is that? Again, this canvas was from Dollar Tree. We just deconstructed it to give it a different look. And I really like that look. I like the look of the nice soft wood and I think it's just so pretty. There's a lot of texture going on there. So again, everything will be linked down below, including where I found this nice file that I put on here. It's a beautiful design. And there's another little project that was inspired by Dollar Tree. All right, you can't tell me not to use this hot glue gun now. I am absolutely obsessed. So let's do something else that is using some hot glue. Okay, at Dollar Tree, I found this really nice piece of decor. I really love this whole kind of farm style look with all of the slats. And I like that it had a nice wood background with the white, very nice distressed white. You know me, I love a beaded handle and I didn't even have to do it myself, so that's super cute as well. I also found these cute carrots. How adorable are these? These were in the Easter section and we are just gonna have fun doing a fun little design right on here. So I have got to take down, in fact, I did as I was putting the dishes away tonight, I went ahead and started the dishwasher and started cleaning up all of my Valentine's decorations. And it was so sad to see them be taken down because I absolutely adored them. But I promised myself that if I got them taken down that I could start crafting for spring. And if I get all of this stuff done tonight, then I can go ahead and decorate tomorrow. So it'll be night and day different when everybody wakes up. It'll just be as if spring has sprung. <laughs> but our weather is definitely not um, singing spring at all. So it's it's very, very chilly. Although we did have a nice warm day. Got to take the kids to the park. It was beautiful. We took advantage of it. We got to a really warm 50 degrees. So we are really happy about that. All right, so I used a really fun font that I am truly, truly in love with. And I just put welcome with this piece of vinyl, okay? Now, before I do anything, I'm, I'm wanting to do the welcome right here. But... Let's open these because I want to put the carrots down here and I want to get an idea for placement. So if I do maybe three carrots, let's see. I wanted to do, yeah, I think that will be just fine. Oh, my heat press. Okay. Three would be fine, but you could also do five and kind of curve them to take the shape of, I kind of like that, to take the shape of the bottom there. Oh, that's really cute too. I might do that. I think that's really fun. Then we have a lone carrot there, but we'll find some use for it somewhere. Okay, let's grab the transfer tape that we used in our first craft and reuse that keeping those crafting costs down and here we go. Okay, burnishing the top, turn over. Whoops, sometimes I need a little weeding tool to help nudge that along. Okay, did that auto shut off? Let's make sure that that is nice and heated and ready to go. We're gonna use that for the carrots. Okay, and oh goodness, don't stick to my mat. <laughs> Now let's place that right, and I wanted to center it top and bottom with those little lines. I think that looks good. Okay, so we'll place that down. Okay, very quick to heat up. Have to love that as a crafter. There's nothing worse than waiting for a glue gun to heat up. It's just, when you wanna craft, you wanna craft, right? I'm always practicing patience, but that one kind of wears my patience then. <laughs> we all have those things, right? But Waiting for the hot glue can kind of wear my patience. Okay, so there is, I think I'm gonna have to retire this now. It's just got a lot of gunky residue on there now. So happy that we got two uses out of it, but guilt-free about retiring it because we got a lot of, or we got two uses out of it. Okay, so let's do, let's add some glue. Okay, there. And let's center this first little cutie. Somewhere, whoops, somewhere like that. Okay, I think that looks nice and center. And then I like to do center first and then go 
out from there. So now we can do to the left and right. And we'll do something again. We're going to kind of curve. Okay. So this is kind of tilted a little bit. And this will tilt just a tad more. And again, it's just taking the shape of that circle there. Okay. I like that. I think that's kind of fun. Okay. So there's that. And I'll just do the same for the other side. Working on some even placement there. That little step there. And there we go. Okay, worth every penny. I'm loving this hot glue. Very excited I could get it out of the box. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just gonna fluff these little cuties a little bit. Okay, so there is a fun, oh, I like that, it's so cute. And I love that it has that little pop of orange color. I think it's fun because there's so much texture. We've got the wood, we've got the nice little beads. Then we have just a simple, bold welcome there, which is really nice and fun. And then we have the texture of those little carrots. So really cute, really fun. Make sure that you check out every little section of Dollar Tree because sometimes these little trinkets can be super fun to just add and glue to projects. It makes crafting super easy and super quick, but again, it adds dimension and texture and that's gonna be adorable in my kitchen. So love that. Okay, I saw these little bandanas in more of the hair and makeup section and I thought they were so cute and I know you're wondering what in the world you're going to do with this, but I thought it would be really fun to create more of a dish towel look and it's not going to be something that's functional, right? Because these are not going to sop up any water, but I love having a little decorative towel and I thought the little bandana could be something that you layer so that you have like an actual dish towel underneath it where people can... Um, dry their hands, but then you have this smaller little piece that you can layer on top of your towel and bring in a pop of color, but also bring in just a nice little fun look for spring. So I have here, let me grab my weaving tool. I think I just put a cute little bunny on here. And I wanna be careful ironing onto this material. So I'm going to put my heat press a little bit lower. And I will link where I got this bunny. I can't remember if this was design space or if I got this from somewhere else. So I'll double check and give you that information down below. But I thought it'd be cute just to put this little bunny right on here. Isn't that cute? And I wanna do a little bit of an offset there, make it a little bit more right justified. Let's see if we can see. Okay, this is 100% polyester. We're good to go, though I'm going to look up my heat settings real quick. Okay, so I checked my heat settings and I was right. We're gonna do a little bit cooler. So I'm going to move this to the side and we're going to do, I'm going to click my temperature and we're going to do 315. Okay. So that's all good and dandy. Now bring my mat back in and I'm actually going to keep it folded that way because it's all folded really nice and it'll be nice and um, I'll be able to center it really nicely. Okay. So that looks good there. I'm going to run my heat press as it's cooling. I'm gonna run that over there just to give it a little bit of an iron and again, to make sure there's no moisture in there. And then I'll place that little bunny just to the right, lining it up with this nice band of green. There we go. And we're already ready to heat. Okay, I'm gonna give that some pressure and let that count down from 30 seconds. All right. And just like before, remove the heat and let that heat draw out. I think that's gonna be really nice if you like layered it on a nice white towel. I think that would be so sweet. Just peeling that off, there's no problem areas. So that's all done, isn't that pretty? And it did come with, let me show you the other one. The other one was just a nice solid green. It has a nice, really pretty kind of spring feel to it with the butterflies and flowers. So that's really fun too. You could do something with that as well. But I think that's really fun. Again, it's not gonna be purely functional, but you know what, decor sometimes isn't functional, right? It's just about having a fun feel for a room and just put a nice functional towel right under it, something a little bit bigger so that you can do a nice layered look. And I think that's gonna be adorable. These items were also found at Dollar Tree. This is actually garland. 
how sweet is this? There are lots of different colors, so you can absolutely choose which one you want to bring into this piece. But I also found this little picket fence piece. It's really cute and it has a nice little hanger there. It is wood hanging decor is what they call that. And I thought it would be really cute just to simply grab one of these pieces and layer it right on here. And I kind of like the little orange one, but I'm gonna deconstruct this so we can see. And actually you could use this jute from the first craft that we did to create the little hanger. So always repurpose, but how sweet would that look? I'm Again, just keeping things simple. Sometimes you don't need to overcomplicate crafting. You can just keep it nice and simple. The green is really giving a cute little spring vibe as well. You could do pink, but I'm kind of liking the orange because we did the carrots earlier and we could kind of have a little consistency going there. Okay, letting that heat back up once more and let's go ahead and glue this right down. I think things like this are really cute for door hangers. Really, really simple. I'm just adding glue all over here. And wherever it doesn't come into contact with the little fence background, it will simply dry. Okay, so I'm just centering that. And easy peasy, within 30 seconds, you have a cute little piece of decor. Now, if the little holes bothered you, you could add some additional embellishments. Maybe you could put little felt flowers or something there to even bring in another little addition of that spring feel, but it doesn't bother me, and I think that's super sweet. So hopefully this inspired you to look at some of the little embellishments in different ways at Dollar Tree. Sometimes things like this can be hard to add vinyl to, so finding things that you can layer on is really exciting. So reason why it's hard to do vinyl is because obviously it doesn't have a solid surface area to stick it down on. So that's why I think layering another little embellishment on top is another really fun idea and a way that you could take this cute little picket fence and make it into a really fun piece of decor for spring. Dollar Tree also has some really cute little wood boxes or trays and they have them in the little crafter section but these are really neat. I think they're intended to be more of a little tray, but I actually am going to use them as a sign that you just prop up like this. They come in the bare wood, but I did add a layer of chalk paint onto the front of them just because I wanted a nice look. I didn't add the chalk paint to the side because I really like having the white on the front, but then having the natural wood on the sides. It's just something that's really cute. So I went ahead and got them in two different sizes. Let's check the sizing out. Looks like we have four and three quarters by four and three quarters for that larger one. And then we have a four by four for the smaller one. So for the first one, I am going to use an adhesive vinyl. So we're just going to weed this out and then we can use a transfer tape to lay it down. But for our second one, I'm going to use an iron on and I have this really pretty pattern iron on. So if you've never tried ironing onto wood before, it's so easy and it gives you more options for how to use your materials. So I'll start weeding out this first one and I thought these would be really cute to set up next to one another. I like pairing more of a solid print or solid design <laughs> and then more of a print. I think it's a fun little way to decorate and it's very visually interesting. Okay, so this first one says Hello Spring. That's gonna go on the larger one. And then once more, I thought it'd be cute to do a pattern iron on. Now you don't have to do iron on, but the pattern that I wanted to use was an iron-on. So if you come across that where you have the material that you want or the pattern you want in the material you want and you're wanting to put it on something such as wood, then I'm gonna show you how easy that is. Isn't that gonna be cute? I think that's nice and I always like to incorporate something wordless into my decor. That way you're not standing around reading everything, right? <laughs> and we've talked about that on my channel before, how it's nice to have the wordless stuff. Okay, so we have our little worded sign and let's find that squeegee. Again, this says hello spring. Let me know if you're saying hello spring in the area that you're living in. I think we're getting closer and closer, but I think we can also dip back into winter anytime. <laughs> so we just kind of wake up and see what we're gonna get. Okay, so this has a lot of little delicate pieces. So I'm gonna go slow but there we go. Okay, before anything, what I wanna do is I intend to set it 
like this, but I want to make sure that it's not, you know, going to tip over. And sometimes you'll have a side that's maybe not quite a right degree or a, a 90 degree angle, so it can tip. So you always just want to double check first, right? Double check that everything is going to be fine. I have made the mistake of not checking in the past and it's not the end of the world, but when you walk by a sign, it could tip over if it's not completely steady and I've ended up having to redo the sign. So just cause it ends up getting a little annoying, but again, not the end of the world, but if you think to do it, just test out your little sign before you decide which side to make the bottom. Okay, there's that. Again, really delicate little pieces. We'll save this transfer tape because it can definitely go another round. And let's get that burnished, that tiny little flower. Keep your scraper handy just in case you need to nudge any pieces back down. And there we go. Okay, so there's our first sign. Simple, cute, love it. That will be linked down below in terms of the design I used. Now, again, let me look up the heat settings for doing a pattern iron-on on wood. Okay, so I also have that liner from the design we put on the reverse canvas because it's quite large. I'm gonna use that just to help provide a little protection here. But what I looked up is a desired temperature would be, I believe it said 305. So I'll click the temperature, put that down a little bit for 30 seconds. Okay, so we'll let that cool down just a little bit. I'm going to take my liner. Again, this is just the iron-on liner for the bigger design we used earlier, just because it's nice and big. I'm just protecting my wood from the heat source, and I'm just gonna preheat that just a little bit. Okay, and I can take that up. Oh, also, again, let's test. Looks great. Actually, I'm gonna go this way because this way has a little blemish here. Not a big deal, but I don't want to see that on. Actually, let's put that on the bottom if it works out. Yep, okay. Put the little bunny right on there. Again, just waiting for my heat press to be ready. And this actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Pattern iron-on does not have a sticky back, so I'm gonna place this down. That way I can use the sticky here to place it and keep it where I'd like it. Okay, something that's kind of annoying about, I don't know if it's all pattern iron-on, but I know Cricut's pattern iron-on doesn't have the adhesive or sticky back. Okay, so that's all ready to go. Place this right here and let that count down from 30. Okay, there we go. Now I'll just turn my little wood piece all the way over and let that cool off. Again, placing it on a cold surface, that way we can draw out the heat, making sure it's nice and cool. And the heat can stay in that wood for a little bit, so, okay, that looks pretty cool. So now, I'll just monitor all my edges, and there we go. How sweet. Okay, so we have a little duo here, which I think is adorable. I'll just prop them up right next to each other. That'll be super sweet. And I like pairing, again, a nice little worded piece with something that is wordless, but also has a nice little pattern to it. So hopefully that was inspiring to you. Again, just grab some chalk paint, paint the top if you would like to add just a little bit of a blank slate there. Super cute, and again, both of these little pieces were from the Dollar Tree. Okay, at the Dollar Tree was another little wood blank. This one was sized three and a half by five and a half. Again, in the bare wood, I just added the chalk paint to the top. I also found these cute little bunnies, which I thought were absolutely adorable. They're a nice little bare wood. You could add a little paint to them, but I am gonna go for a nice, simple look here. I'm simply gonna glue these, and I'm not sure if Dollar Tree had any, and maybe I just didn't notice them, but I went ahead and picked these up from Hobby Lobby because I wanna add little pom-poms to each of their little bums. So, I am going to just create a tiny little simple piece of decor here. I have done this in previous videos where you just take a cute little trio of things, glue them down, and it honestly ends up being some of my favorite little pieces of decor because it's just so simple. So taking that glue gun once more, adding some glue right to the back. And I'm gonna start with the bunny that's gonna go to the right there. And when I got a little bit much, so let's grab 
a weeder and sometimes I can just kind of remedy the little glue there. Okay, so there's our little first one. I'll be a little bit more gentle with the glue. On the second one, it truly doesn't take much. And of course you can use the adhesive of your choice. And there we go. And then again, I love also how this um, backside kind of takes the shape of the front side of the next bunny. It just really, I don't know, I don't know if they planned it that way or if it just works, but it makes them kind of tuck in there really nice. Okay, here's our next one. Let's focus on some even placement there. And there we go. Okay, now opening up this little cutie, let's add just a little fluff. And again, we're just adding some texture here to the bottom of each little bunny. Okay, so just add a little boop there. And we'll get all these little glue strings out in just a minute. Love that, okay. There we go. Let me remedy these little strings. You can either melt them with a little hair dryer to remove those strings or you can just take them off. But here is that little piece. Again, so simple, it's also wordless. I love the repetition. And with the addition of the little pom-poms, we have some additional texture. Also has really, really nice dimension on there. I like how it has the darker wood on the edges. Again, just another way you can keep it very, very simple by doing a little bit of layering with the items that you find at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree also has these really nice burlap bags. This is their horizontal burlap bag. They do have these, I believe, they have more of a vertical one as well that's a little bit skinnier that I have seen in the past. But these are really fun to add iron on to. Again, found this in the crafty section of the Dollar Tree. And then what I'm going to do is I found a really cute design and I'm going to put it on with a glitter iron on. And the reason I wanna do a glitter iron on is because it's a tad thicker and it also has a visual texture plus an actual um, texture that you can feel. But the visual texture is important when you are putting it on something that has texture itself because sometimes if you put more of a solid iron on or just a traditional iron on onto something with a lot of texture, that texture could seep through, not all the time, but sometimes you might see it come through that just regular iron on. But if you put something that has additional texture on top of it, it masks it perfectly. So I thought this would be a really cute little design and I am gonna show you exactly what it looks like in just a minute, but let me go ahead and start weeding it. I thought it'd be fun to have a little themed bag for the spring season. It's always nice to have just another little fun bag to take along either to um, a Bible study or church or even to the library. And most likely this is going to be a, just a nice little library bag because it's definitely too small for my Bible and uh, all of the other little study materials that I'm always taking to church. So this will most likely be a little library bag. Perfect for a few chapter books and a nice little fun way to be springy, right? Okay, so let me get all of the little middle pieces out here. This says, now it's all backwards right now because of how I need to weed it, but it just says carrots 25 cents each. I thought that was so cute. I originally was going to put it on that reverse canvas, but then when I saw the burlap tope, I, tote, sorry, I thought, it's definitely appropriate for a little bag. This would be fun to also bring along to a farmer's market as well. That's why I thought this would be a cute design for this project. It's amazing how you can see certain designs and know, you know what they would look really great on, whether it's a shirt or a bag or a coffee mug. Okay, last couple little pieces and we'll be good to start. Placing this on. Now I have my heat press at 305 and we're going to heat this for 30 seconds. This is what it will look like. How sweet is that? Okay. And make sure I don't have a little piece here from a different project. You'll make sure there's nothing on your liner that will be ironed onto your project. Okay, let's put the heat pad down. And what I want to do now is I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock because the inside, I'm going to show you this, it has a more, 
I don't know, kind of plasticky liner and it just makes me a tad nervous. So what I'm gonna do is place a piece of cardstock inside. Let's see, which side do I wanna do? Probably this side. I'm gonna place that piece of cardstock right inside. And that's just going to kind of protect the inside from sticking to itself. Because once the heat's applied, I worry that if it's kind of plasticky, that's gonna melt into itself. So we'll just be super careful. Always monitor the project right in front of you. Again, we'll preheat just a little bit. Okay, that looks great. And see, it almost looks like it's kind of working a little bit, but let's just, let's just play it out and see what happens. Okay, let's do the heat or the lint roller really quickly. Okay, nothing on the surface, and do that. Okay, looks great, and let's add the heat. Always monitor your project, make sure you are keeping an eye on it throughout the whole process. If it needs less heat, then make sure to remove your heat. Okay, so it seems like it's kind of wanting to warp a little bit. I don't, yeah, I don't think this one worked out. Okay, so this one was a no-go. I'll show you. It just kind of started like melting. <laughs> the And the back material kind of just started kind of shrinking into itself. So I feel like I did this before though, and it worked really well. Um, but this time it just, it was, it wasn't working. The material is just kind of sinking into itself. In terms of the inside, I don't think it had any melting, but yeah, look at that. Mm, not very cute. Okay, so I went ahead and learned that lesson for you, so maybe skip this one. Although I wanna say, in one of my last videos, it actually did work really well. So I don't know, sometimes maybe it is gonna work just fine and sometimes maybe just no luck. The next thing that I found at Dollar Tree were these really nice bins. Now, full disclosure, they do have a little decor on the other side, but I'm gonna turn them to the other side and do a little personalization of my own. I'm trying to see, okay, so they all have something a little bit different. This says shake your bunny tail, the pink one, and then this purple one is going to say, and if you love these just as they are, then go for it. But I thought I could do something a tad cuter on the other side. This one is bunny kisses Easter wishes. And then this is Hop This Way. This Hop This Way I think is the best of the design choices they made, but I still wanna do my own thing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to turn it over to the blank side and I'm going to put a little rubbing alcohol right on there. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then I have some little personalizations here and I will share both the font that I used as well as I will share this little design. So I just incorporated their little initial with this design and I thought that would be really cute on these little bins for Easter. I still have this transfer tape from earlier and I think it's just the right size. Yep, so we'll see how many uses we can get out of that. But let's burnish the top. I pre-weeded these because they were a tad intricate though not awful, but I wanted just to speed it up for us to the back side and there we go. Okay, so I just have each of my kiddos little monogram and they'll get, each get their own little bucket here. But I thought this was way too cute. Okay, and much more my style. So definitely in my opinion elevated that little bucket. Grab the little weeding tool just to help nudge this up. And hopefully, oh, it might be a stinker, we'll see. Hopefully these lay down nice. Might need a little encouragement, but we'll get it done. It's actually doing pretty well. Sometimes plastic and vinyl can be tricky, but you just take your time. Okay, one thing I do want to mention is that if you decide that you are going to do multiple of these, once you have them personalized with the vinyl on there, do not go and restack them inside of one another because I've done that before with plastics when I was personalizing some totes for my linen closet. And when I was 
or as I was finishing them, I would stack them back in and the vinyl actually peeled up and off. It just, I don't know what happened, but from then on, I learned my lesson not to do that. Bucket number two, so cute. And I love the contrast. And there we go. Very, very cute. That's how those turned out. I really do think that these have been completely elevated. Not that the designs weren't cute, but I think these are really chic looking. Very timeless and fun. Love the colors too. Okay, so these are fun for Easter. I actually, I already have Easter baskets for the kiddos, so I'm not gonna be using these to do the Easter baskets, though you could use these as your basket for your ba Easter baskets. However, I like to have stuff like this either for egg hunts or just for keeping all the fun stuff tidied up on Easter morning because as they're opening up things, it's kind of fun just to have a little place for them to put all their stuff. So, love this idea. I think these are really cute. I think this would be a really cute Easter basket too. So if you don't have an Easter basket already, then definitely head to the Dollar Tree and pick some of these up. Okay, Dollar Tree has these very nice clear glass plates. And in my opinion, I feel like they have these all year round but I thought it would be a fun idea to do little dinner plates for us for the Easter season. I just put our Valentine's Day plates away this evening, and like I said, tomorrow it's going to be full of decorating for Easter. So I like having a little seasonal just tableware. I think it'll be really fun. These are not very fun to take off, all these little labels, but they'll be just fine. Okay, so I have that all cleaned up. I'll get some stuff on there to get that all cleaned up. But this is the back side. It's kind of hard to see that. But here's the front, right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna keep this food safe. Now, I usually don't like doing my vinyl on the back side of things, especially glass, because you can see each and every tiny little bubble. But for this project, with these each being just a little over a dollar, I'm going to go ahead and do it and I think it'll be fine. We just have to be a little bit more mindful with our vinyl. So what I did is I curved a little Happy Easter, I believe it says Happy Easter, little text in Design Space and I'll link the font that I chose and used down below. It's gonna take a minute. I feel that if I cut vinyl, um, days ahead of when I'm crafting, it doesn't weed as good. I've spoke to that on my channel before, but it's very consistent for me. For example, if I would have cut this, taken it out of the Cricut and weeded it, I wouldn't have had any problems. But for some reason, I don't know if it's just that the adhesive kind of just starts to reattach, not reattach itself, but kind of gets a little clingy to itself. But this all is backwards because again, we're going to put it on the underside and so, because we did that, I went ahead and mirrored my design so that it reads backwards or mirrored. But then once we flip the plate over, and you'll see if this isn't making sense, you'll see it play out. But once it flips over, then the letters will be going in the right direction. Okay, I'll finish weeding this out. Again, we're gonna do five little plates. And then we'll get all these little pieces put on our plate. Okay, there is oops, the last one right there. So we have Happy Easter curved. And all I did was I took the size of my dinner plate. I took the size of the inside as well, that little inside circle. And I made a little template in Design Space so that I could put my words actually on my template and curve them around. So if you're wondering how I got this to kind of line up, then that's, that's how. Okay, I'm going to take rubbing alcohol and I'm just going to spray the back side to make sure this is nice and clean. Focusing on the area that I'm gonna be putting the vinyl down. Okay, and now I have a transfer tape that I'll lay right on top. And I have a couple little areas where it wasn't quite big enough. So I am just simply going to take a little snippet off of some used transfer tape, just like that. And then as long as I overlap this, it's all one piece again. Okay, so then I can just burnish as normal. And I decided to just do one big piece and then trim them apart because I think because of the curved nature of it, 
it'd be kind of hard to reuse. Do whatever you would like, but that's why I decided just to do all one piece. Okay, everything is burnished all at once, and now I'm just going to go through, being careful not to cut into my vinyl, but let's place this down. Okay, again, we're working on the back side of the plate. Right on down. Okay, so now grab my little scraper and then we can peel up the transfer tape. There we go. So now when we turn this around, we have, oh, there we go. Oh, see, this is why I don't like doing it on the other side. But you just have to go and kind of burnish those little problem areas. But do you see why I always have people say, you should do this, you should put it on the inside. And it is a good idea, but you just have to be so careful with it. Okay, so let me just, being very careful, you really shouldn't, well, I don't say shouldn't, you should be really mindful when you are putting a squeegee over exposed vinyl, because it doesn't slide like it would over transfer tape. But there we go. It almost makes it look a little bit gray, doesn't it? But those are really cute. Oh, you totally lose it once my hand goes away. It almost all also looks like it's etched in there, which is kind of neat. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of them, and I'm gonna see if I can do a better job at really pressing those down and burnishing so that you don't see as much of the dots. But here is exactly why I usually just put vinyl on top of things. But in order to keep this food safe, since vinyl technically isn't food safe, that's why I mirrored it and put it underneath. My second plate and I am just burnishing the heck out of it to see if I can get a little bit better of a result. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> kind of, I don't know. I mean, even if I am really pushing those down, some of them aren't even budging. So, I think it's one of those things where you have to decide how much you're gonna let it bother you. For me, it might bother me quite a bit, but again, this is kind of an example of why I tend not to do the whole mirror of adhesive vinyl and placing things either on the inside or behind. The next project that we're going to do is this little whiteboard. This comes in a whiteboard or a traditional chalkboard, but I went ahead just for kind of a more spring look I decided to do the whiteboard version this time. Again, from Dollar Tree, they are usually in the craft section. So that's where you'll find these. I'm just rubbing this down with some rubbing alcohol. And then I have a little design here. I'm gonna do a few different colors. Again, the design will be linked below. And let's just get this all rooted out. Okay, so it's pretty design. I'm just gonna keep all of my little middle pieces that I'm weeding out up in the corner here. It's a way to just keep them all contained. But this says, April showers bring May flowers, which is always a cute little saying around this time of year. Although we've had a lot of rain, so I'm hoping we have a very beautiful spring. Okay, so then once you're done, you can just cut off that little area. I did another one down here that has the extra vinyl, but there is our main piece. And then we're gonna bring in a couple little pops of color here with a blue vinyl and a pink vinyl. I think this is our little rain cloud. So, yes, there it is. There's our little rain cloud and then the little middle Whoops, <laughs> comes out. Let's see if I can just get the middle there. Okay, leaving that nice little outline. Okay, so there's that. And then we have some cute little tulips in this pink. There we go. And there we are. Okay, so I'm going to do my biggest piece first. Let's see if I can reuse some tape. I, I have some from that plate project. And I might just kind of do a little surgery here and again if you just layer it you're good to go so 
definitely being thrifty with some of these pieces, but let's burnish this piece down. And I'm gonna lay this one down first and then we'll just tuck the other little pieces in once this piece is on our whiteboard. Okay, whoops, there we go. And right there. Great. And peel off that first one. Okay, now grabbing some additional little transfer tape, we'll place these two down as well. Okay, here's our little cloud and raindrops that we're going to tuck ever so close right here. Peel that off. And the tulips, which is my And there is a cute little sign that's totally elevated, again, from Dollar Tree. How sweet is that? And you can put anything you'd want on there. But I like the little spring look that that has. And it'd be very, very cute either in a power room or wherever you please, but very nice, very simple, and quick and easy. Okay, last but not least, I found this cute little chick. As you can see, it's pretty rough on this front side. Very cute, but this was the only one that they had left and I really like the idea of it. If it wasn't all roughed up, I would have probably put some vinyl on here and made it cute, but because it is definitely a little too worn for my taste, I'm gonna flip this over and what I'm going to do is do something on this back side. Now, as you can see, this back side's not really giving us much. In fact, that sticker's gonna stay there. But what I thought we could do is we could wrap this or lay over some really nice pattern vinyl and do a nice wordless project with this. So, you know, I'm always trying to do things that are wordless and let's see, could this potentially be perfect? Okay, that's great. Now, what I'm going to do is place this one like this. Oops, sorry about that. Just getting an idea for size. I was thinking I was going to need transfer tape, but you know what? In fact, I might use my brayer tool. What I'll do is I'll just peel back some of this liner, just like this, and fold that flat back. And I have my brayer tool handy. And now I'm just going to lay down my vinyl. Although I wonder if you're gonna see that sticker through it. Oh, you might a little bit. I don't think it's enough to ruin the project, but let's see a little bit. Okay, so the vinyl is down. Okay, and then let's grab my favorite little tool here. I'm gonna go around with my little knife and just trim off all of the excess, just like this. And I believe this is a Cricut vinyl, so I don't know that they make this anymore, so you probably won't see it listed below, but just use any pattern vinyl that you would like and it will turn out beautiful. Okay, so let's turn this over. Uh, okay, so you will definitely wanna remove your little tag in there, right? But I think that's super cute. Let's see if we could add a little bow or embellishment just to kind of help um, mend that a bit, but also give it a little bit more visual interest. Okay, I'm gonna grab some blush ribbon here. Let's get this all turned back on and ready to go. And let's see if I can't just do something super simple. I love that. And we'll just make these nice trimmed down. And then wondering, no, I kinda like it just like that. I think that's fun. So, We'll do that. And then what I like to do is, again, remove your little label. I feel like I'm the, um, the one who learns for us today on a craft or two. But I like to just glue down the little tails as well. That way I can give them that opportunity to stay put. Okay, and the tops are just fine. So I think that's super cute. Another way to have wordless art, another way to get creative with these fun little shapes that we often see around Dollar Tree and other craft places. So I think that turned out really cute. You could also add some wording if you want, but again, the idea was being wordless here. 
Okay, bringing in a few of my favorites. We did so much fun crafting. Another favorite from the video was finally testing out this new glue gun. Absolutely a winner. I would absolutely encourage you to add this to your cart. I love it, very impressed, and happy to have it in my craft space. All right, so this little bandana turned into being a nice little decorative tea towel. I think that's very fun. I also have this little sign that we did, again, using those wall decals and then adding the little beaded handle. I think that really elevated the simple wood design that we had or the wood sign that we had and also the little decals. So took a few things that we saw there and definitely elevated that piece. This is one of my favorites. I love the little carrots and the texture that they offer and I just love all of the tones that are going on. I'm definitely going to hang that up immediately after I'm done crafting today. And then this little reverse canvas was very fun. You can definitely find some additional reverse canvas videos on my channel. So just search for those if you want to learn more, a little bit more about how to do that. But again, so easy and you can do it in a variety of ways. Keeping it wordless on these last two projects, again, we did much more than just shown here, but I'm just bringing in a few that we did, but I love how these turned out. Again, it's just another nice way to take a look at what you can do with all of the wooden shapes that the Dollar Tree tends to bring out during all of these holiday seasons. So, hope this was helpful for you. Let me know which one was your favorite. Let me know if you did indeed pick this up from my haul and if you're loving it as much as I am, or let me know if you finally decided that you're definitely going to click buy. <laughs> all right, everyone, I'll see you in the next video.